Welcome friends to the first episode of That Whiskey Show. My name is Chris and this beautiful lady is my wife Joan. Hey. Tonight we are going to bring you a review of a whiskey that I'm personally excited to try. It's going to be kind of a whole new experience for me. Don't necessarily steer towards the smoke and the peat, but my wife assures me I'm going to dig it. And that is going to be the High West Campfire Edition. And then we are going to talk about our own personal cast that we are making using that whiskey. We had another bottle, we've already infused it with some Cabernet, and uh, we're going to do a comparison review of the two. What I'd like to do is, I'd like to start off with my wife kind of taking you through a walkthrough of what we did to make our cask, and then we'll get into the review of the campfire. Hello again. All right. Um, so this is our very first cask experiment, a uh, very first chance to uh, finish a whiskey. I've been a huge fan of red wine finished whiskeys, um, ranging from uh, bourbons, ryes, uh, especially scotches, especially peated scotches. Um, and generally when you uh, have a cask, what you want to do is take something that is a little rough around the edges, something that uh, for one reason or another you, you might not like. It might be a little too rough for you, but here, instead of doing that, I took a whiskey that is already really good, really well-rounded. Um, this is uh, the High West Campfire. It is a blend of bourbon, super high rye rye, and a peated scotch. Possibly Brook Lottie, the uh, inspiration for this came to the maker while they were touring Brook Lottie. So they won't tell anybody whose peated malt is going in there. Uh, the bourbon and the rye are from MGP. Super high rye, I believe 95%. Um, and that is a high <laughs> rye. So you're going to get a lot of the uh, natural cinnamon and spice kind of notes in here, um, as well as that hint of smoke, which doesn't come off as a hint to most people who are trying this for the first time. It comes off as, as pretty smoky. Uh, yeah, Campfire's I'm, an apt name for I'm, it. I'm excited to try it out because, as I said before, I don't necessarily steer that way. I like more of your smooth kind of the sweeter finish of whiskeys. I like getting that graham cracker note, some of the nice like dark cherry chocolate notes in there. So I am excited to go ahead and try the campfire because she has been telling me that this is one that may kind of steer me over a little bit more. I'm going to make a convert of <laughs> right? it. Right. And she, and she really, she really loves the, the smoke stuff. So, you know, um, you know, a little bit of back history for us too, real quick. Both of us have uh, worked in the bar industry for a long time. I, uh, I did myself almost 20 years. My wife is going on about 20 years. Um, I got out of it several years back, but it's for me, I was more of working in the meat and potatoes, blue collar kind of bar industry. Pour me a Jack and Coke, you know, uh, gin and tonic, beer, that kind of stuff. My wife has definitely been more on the higher end handcrafted cocktails. So we're bringing you a lot of years of bartending experience, but two very different experiences. And so she's really gotten me to start enjoying whiskey much more than I ever have. You know, I always just kind of drank Jack, Jim, anything that had high marketing value. If you saw the commercials 50 times, it's what you picked up at the store. So uh, this past year, really been getting into some more of the whiskey. So I am definitely very excited to try the campfire. And uh, I think we should just go ahead and do that now. All right. Cool. Let's start with a little bit of the regular mm -hmm. untreated campfire. So what we did with this one, though, is we finished it in a, a cab-seasoned barrel. I only left the Cabernet in here for like three hours, so um, obviously that wouldn't do anything on a you know a real barrel size barrel, but everything you do in a tiny little cask like this needs to be done for way less time. Like, way less. And on the side note, on the cask itself, 
this was something that her and I had been talking about doing for a while. So I started looking out for them and I actually found this on Amazon. It was very affordable. I think this was about 35, maybe $40. I will go through my back history, order history to see if I can find it. And I will put a link to it in the description below. So if you are interested in ordering one, you'll know where to get it, what size it is and the different prices. Cause they had all different variations of how much char was in them, size, so, uh, but yeah, I will try to find that link and put it in the description below for sure. All right, shall we? That smells really good. Another note, when you're uh, trying a whiskey for the first time, even if you know you want it chilled, even if you know you want a little water in it, um, give it a chance right out of the bottle, just the way it comes. Yeah, because she Especially knows. Especially on nosing it. Even if you don't really want to try it neat, at least, when you're smelling it, getting everything from there, at least because I definitely prefer my whiskey on the rocks. That's something I I enjoy it with ice, and a lot of people may consider that party foul, if you will. But there's a couple guys that we watch a lot, and we really respect them, like their show a lot. They've got a lot of good knowledge. Uh, the guys from Whiskey Tribe. And they have a saying of, there's no wrong way to drink your whiskey. Drink it how you like to drink it. And I think that that's a pretty good philosophy on that. So Best way to drink the whiskey is the way you like to drink it. But I got to tell you, the name Campfire, that's the real deal. Well named. It, uh, it's kind of shocking how much this actually smells exactly <laughs> like you're sitting next to a campfire. It's... Um, Kind of that next day when you get up and you smell your clothes. Yes, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it smells like. That's, um, yeah, that's incredible. And look how oily that is. Yeah, this is bottled at 46%, so that's going to tell me that it is most likely not chill filtered and that there is no E130 added to it because uh, over 46%, uh, the E130, the uh, caramel colorant, will actually come out of suspension. And since this isn't a bourbon, and um, it's going to be okay, even if there was some E130 in there. That's totally within the realm of... Look at the big totally on Brad. <laughs> but probably not in here. Right. It's as, not in here. As it's you can see, here. this is why I let her talk about the whiskey while I just smell it and drink it. So here's to you. Cheers, my friends, and cheers, my love. And that oil you see, those lipids that are left over, also non-chill filter. It says that, um, states it um, on the website, if not on the label. I actually should have read the actual label. Um, but yeah, non-chill filtered. Wow. Most likely no color added. That has an amazing finish to it. Nice long finish. That is, that is really... Definitely will stick with you. Don't try this first if you're... If you're having an evening of trying whiskeys, uh, probably don't make this your first one. If you're gonna do some Highland scotches or even, um, you know, just regular bourbons, make this make this one of your last because it's got a really nice long finish. It's gonna color your palate a little bit. That is, yeah, she's not kidding. I mean, that is a really, really long finish to that. And it is, you're right. I do rather enjoy this. That is something else. And it, uh, the color on it is really nice. And I will try, and I will take the camera and pan over some of this so we get you some close ups of that oil and that nice color on there. And B stuff. roll. B roll is what we call that. <laughs> See that? She's teaching me whiskey. I learned that. I'm teaching her video that. stuff. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, wow, this is. This campfire is impressive. I really do like it. What's the alcohol by volume on this? 46% Amy. Okay. Let me just make sure. Yes, 46%. Gotcha. That is, yeah, I really, I do enjoy that. Uh, now that I have tried it this way though, I would like to put just a dash of water in to see how that maybe opens up some flavors. Um, so. uh, about five drops, that's probably I don't know, two milliliters. Okay, just let that sit for a minute and see how that opens up the difference on the nose and what it ultimately does on the taste. See, I get a lot more bright fruit, a lot more. 
See, I still can't. Little apple coming out now that wasn't there before. Green pear. There's, I, I get a little bit more spice. So before when I was uh, smelling it, it had all I could really get was that campfire that burnt mm -hmm. into your clothes after a night of camping smell. Now I'm starting to get a little bit more of the spice. I'm not necessarily getting the fruit you are, but that's... There's a bright kind of sharpness to it that the water opened up a little bit. That's nice. I don't generally water my whiskey, but anytime you're trying it, always a good idea to now, put just a few drops you in You see, there. for me, so this is interesting, and this is this is why we do this stuff and uh, why we try different things because I actually, to my surprise, preferred it before the water. I, I it, felt it that it really did it, open up um, a, lot of, a lot of spice, a lot of almost sharp tanginess. Yeah, it, it, I preferred it before the water. I think it just had a better finish and a little bit better flavor for me. I think I enjoyed that taste of the wood. Two milliliters might have been a little too much. Over the spice that that water brought out. So, and that's why you always try it neat mm -hmm. first because you may discover that the water or if you are a person that likes to drink it on the rocks like myself, that that maybe is not the route to go because this one, I would definitely prefer to just drink alone. A lot of times uh, when you water a peated malt, um, the pepper will come out a lot more. And that's what happened. So for me, it was, it was more of a spice reaction. She seems to See, get See, I really fruit. like it a lot. Yeah, I, I but, think that's great. Yeah, I, I definitely did, prefer like, it Almost normal. black pepper comes out. Yeah. yeah. So now, with that being said, I am interested to try our cask batch. Because knowing that we have attempted to soften it a little bit, with oh, it, it will have softened a lot. I'm going to be interested to see what flavors that adds as far as flavors from the wine and how it's changed a little bit of that spice. So do we just kill these <laughs> and yeah. go right? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. well. I never, really good whiskey should never be shot, but I guess we could probably, that's like a half ounce of Shut up. <laughs> it was just a, sh a sip. It was just a sip. Yeah, that wasn't really like... Okay. And generally, um, what you're going to want to do when you uh, do a cask finish is take it out, strain it, because you will have little bits of barrel sediment, mm. little bits of char that come out. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and put it right into the glass. I'm not afraid of a little let's bit. Let's do it. Sediment. Let's just let's do it so, because here you're on that side. That looks better. Go ahead and just yeah. Just just go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna need to this honestly called the bung. <laughs> and look at the how different the color is now. Much darker. So yeah, there was only three hours of wine in there, but on something this small, it's gonna get a lot of it. Plus, oh, and there is there's no sediment that came out. All right, cool. That definitely gave it a much darker tint then. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the carbon char on the inside, that the part that actually turned to charcoal, when you have a charred rather than toasted, you actually do have some charcoal. That's gonna act uh, just like the charcoal in your water filter acts. It's going to take out any kind of congener, which um, sometimes it adds flavor, sometimes it adds negative flavor. Uh, if you have a rougher, kind of like skunky whiskey, carbon is your friend. Mm. Um, but sometimes it can take out a little too much. It, it definitely... We did condition this with water first. Yes, a must. Definitely. Um, Don't skip that. The instructions will, with the cask will come. Don't skip that step because everything you put in will come right out. Yes. So you got you to gotta do that part of it. 
it, it changed the notes on it as well with the smell. It sweetened it a lot. Well, yeah, you're going to get a lot of vanillins um, from the oak. And yeah. um, it's going to, what I was going for was just to make it way richer. Not that there's a lot of hard edges, but to just kind of smooth off all the edges. It's only been in there four days. Um, we might leave it in there up to three weeks, no longer than that. Um, and then we're going to let it rest. What do you think? I do get a lot more oak on the nose. In, e with, even though there was then, a ton. Four, yeah. four to eight year old whiskeys here. Um, it also... Oh, wow. Yeah. It, that caramel. Yeah. and But it for me, that heavy spice is in there. Again. Oh, that's, I think it's great. No, I'm not saying that it's not, but I still... I'm going to be interested as it sets mm. more. Don't you get more of the chocolate um, and tobacco though? Yes. Um, so the wine that we put in here um, stated that it had chocolate and tobacco notes. And in the wine initially, I didn't get really any chocolate and very little tobacco. But after we put it in here for three hours, that $7 bottle of wine from Aldi, uh, Sergeant Canyon, by the way, it was super drinkable and just like okay and fine and fruity and, you know, for a cab, not too robust. But after three hours of barrel aging, it was wonderful. Yeah, this is... Up the complexity. Um, I love this. Yeah, I and you can really, really well. you really are after that second nice that sip. Chocolate. That chocolate, it's almost like a chocolate really malted there. rye. It's kind of as uh, it reminds me of that like brick chocolate you get for baking. Yes, totally. That that's the mm -hmm. flavor that I'm getting with the campfire. Dutch with process, that smoke. like alkali coat. Yeah, yeah, getting that uh, absolutely that that's that cooking cool. chocolate taste to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. I think for me personally, it still has just a little bit, a little bit too much of the sharpness with the spice. And I think that it's not the smoke that necessarily I don't dig. It's that sharp bite spice that while it's still good and I enjoy it. Let's do one two drops on that because five it does. was too much let's see what how much do you have I yeah, i'm just gonna do yeah okay i don't know i think it made it i mean this is a great whiskey on its own um very very welcoming kind of entry into the peated mm. um but i i actually think that it's better now and that might be like a pride of ownership kind of thing because I chose the wine, Chris chose the cast. <laughs> we did this together and we made something that actually has like... It definitely has changed A it. really awesome character. And as I said, it's not that really I rich. think that it's bad because I don't. It... I just have different tastes in what I like in whiskey and I do prefer... As I stated before, a little bit of the smoother, not so heavy on the spice, but uh, I still so think it's rather good. Maybe and next I'm, time we do a sherry or something. You know, but also letting it sit for a little bit more, letting it age, letting it, you know. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to give this a little bit more time and then um, it, it's going to need to sit in a bottle. So I will. Uh, right, right. I'll, I'll take the original bottle. I'll put it back in the original bottle. It's going to need like three, four weeks to just kind of calm down mm -hmm. and have all the flavors kind of blend together. And then we'll see kind of what it really turned out like, because this is just, this is a fresh new, like super volatile thing that's still happening. Here. Right. Yeah. I like it though. So, you know, for us, this is, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed myself. This was uh, this was this was great. a lot of fun, yeah. and this is something that doing this together is something that we're very excited about. 
This is, as we stated before, our first episode, so <laughs> maybe a little bit nervous doing it together, yeah, working that stuff. Rough. But at the same time, though, it's something that we're going to grow this show. We're going to grow this channel, and it's something that we plan on doing at least a weekly episode, if not two. But we definitely want to look at uh, one a week, and it's something that we're very excited about. We, we're passionate about whiskey. We want to do something together as husband and wife that we both enjoy very much doing. And so this is something that's exciting for us. And we want to say personally, thank you to everyone who gave our channel a chance. If you dig it, subscribe. If not, that's cool. Um, we just do truly appreciate it. So from myself, once again, I am Chris. I'm my, Joni. My beautiful wife, Joan. <laughs> and... Uh, Here's to you, friends. Cheers, and thank you so much for checking out the channel.